people really like escaping things. I mean, last year the Spiel des Jahres winner was an escape room game in which participants opened up a box and they pretended like they were locked somewhere and had to complete a bunch of puzzles in order to escape. It certainly mimics those point-and-click games that we kind of all grew up with on the computer, uh, Myst or Putt-Putt's Big Adventure. Now in recent years we've seen that grow just the explosion of escape rooms, actual physical rooms where people are, are locked into and can only get out if they solve a certain number of puzzles within a certain amount of time. But I assume that they let, pe they let people out. They have to let people out. And what we're looking at today is the Enigma Emporium. Wish you were here. Now this is a series of postcard escape puzzles. And this is where it differs from a lot of other games. Rather than it being some sort of self-contained box or um, set of clues or a number of cards, really you're given an envelope with a series of postcards in it. And each one has a number of different puzzles on it that you have to solve and try to figure out how they kind of all interact with each other. And this is where it gets incredibly immersive because no longer are you within a self-contained world where you can find the answers with on, within the scope of the postcard. And you can with some puzzles, but you are given the complete free reign of the internet. You're given complete free reign to ask anyone and you are not confined to a time period. Now, because of that, it's a difficult game. You know, I mentioned that you have to rely on outside information and that can be seen as a negative and sometimes it is because there's going to be things on this postcard that you might not be able to figure out even with the help of everyone else that you're interacting with maybe even with being really good at googling things maybe even with your google smart camera that can identify pictures it's really impressive what they've done with this system the first set wish you were here comes with five postcards and each of those postcards is cram packed with clues and ciphers and codes that you have to break. You're given such an incredible amount of information in such a small little package and it's really interesting that they've taken a delivery system that's way more compact than anything else we've seen within the physical gaming realm and it's neat to see what they've managed to do with that and I can't wait to see what they do in the future with it. Now again you need outside technology. It's not even that you need a pair of scissors to bring into the game to cut things up. It's not that you need maybe a pen or, or, or some other minor thing. You, you need the internet. This is something that I tried to use mostly just my cell phone when I needed outside information. And I found myself in a situation where, no, I need a physical desktop, laptop computer where I can, I can type easily, I can pull different things up. And so with that, so know that going in that what you're getting is a set of codes and puzzles and not necessarily an easy way to solve them, especially if you don't have access to that type of technology. And again, I want to emphasize that there is no time frame in this game. This is something that you can pick up and you can you can metaphorically chew on for a while. You can take one of the five postcards, you can take it to work, you can ask friends, uh, you can glance at it and sort of try to figure out, oh, is there something here? Did I miss something? And try to figure things out over the course of a long period of time. Then you free yourself up from... Uh, maybe stress roadblock of, you know, the timer's running out and you can't come up with a solution, you don't have enough time, Th that does away with that. It gives you all the time you need to solve these difficult puzzles that it presents. And now, because it doesn't take the time to necessarily create an entire world, and it does a good job of using narrative storytelling to drive the force of the, of the whole game, but it doesn't have that all-engrossing feel of an escape room or an escape room box game where everything's built around one singular point. Because this is a system that uses actual history, actual art and ciphers and and different things, that scope, that focus isn't there that you might get in a standalone box game. But that's not to say that there isn't a narrative. That's, that's far from the case. It's actually the more you dig into it, the more interesting it gets. What do I think about this game? How do I think it holds up to other offerings in this genre? Uh, I really like it. I think it's a really interesting idea they brought something completely new to the table by uh, removing its own standalone world and just incorporating everything around us you can draw from things that you've learned from the past or you can learn new things from this game by simply having to look it up and this gives you that feeling of being a sleuth and you'll find something and you you slowly it's like it, you know it is that unraveling of a string you pull and you pull and once you get something started you can pull faster and faster and things start to click fast 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 and it's all done on a number of postcards it's taken the escape room genre and it's shrunk it down into something that can be mailed out inexpensively. The amount of playtime that you get in this is greater than something you'd get from Unlock or Exit. Uh, it's more difficult in a lot of ways, um, but it's a completely different taste. 
And if it's something you're interested in, I highly recommend checking it out when it hits Kickstarter. When it does, I'll put the link in the description. Um, but yeah, if this interests you at all, I really recommend taking a look at this. Yes. Incorrigible. Wow. Listen. Incorrigible. We know how to say incorrigible. Incorrigible? No, you say incorrigible. Yeah, we know how to say incorrigible. Incorrigible. Like, That's what I said. No, you say incorrigible. incorrigible. Like, like you're encouraging someone. Well, no, it's the same thing. It's the same word. It's, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not the same word. I thought this was a really uplifting group. You're saying it's something else? Let me look up. Well, how, do you, how are you spelling what you're saying? <laughs> Oh Daniel, you realize you're the president of this group. 